Hello, and welcome to Under 1000. My name's Thomas Flower, and each episode I'll read you a piece of super short fiction. All of the stories are 1000 words or less. Today, I'll be reading How Things Were. Hey, are you going to be in or around Glasgow on the 5th of December? I'm hosting a queer flash fiction open mic night at Categories Books from 7pm. Check out the Under 1000 Facebook page for more details, and come join us if you can. It should be a lot of fun. Moving along to our next exhibit, the guide droned on, expressing a disinterest which was entirely unsuited to the clamouring excitement of the tourists who surrounded him. Rayla stepped aside momentarily, pulling her friend Trayvon with her as she did so. Hey, this door blows. Want to check out the museum on our own? she said in an excited whisper. Sure, was all Trayvon replied. The two exited the 21st Century Transport Gallery, returning to the main lobby. Where should we go to? Rila asked, as they stood right in the centre of the grand, marble-floored room. There's fashion, politics, entertainment, scientific discoveries... Trayvon zoned out as Rayla listed the many and various galleries that the gigantic building held. The National Museum of 21st Century Life was an exhaustively detailed place, with exhibits, records, and information on a whole slew of topics. It was far more than could be covered comfortably in a single visit, and was certainly not done justice by his bored and jaded tour guides. Hey, Trayvon, where should we go? He snapped back to attention realising Rayla had been waiting for a response for a few moments now. Honestly, I don't mind Ray Ray, he said truthfully. Whatever you pick is probably good for me. Well, let's go for politics then. I've been to that one before and it's always funny seeing how badly folks messed up back in the day. Rayla ran excitedly to the stairs, with Trayvon following slowly behind. Together they ascended and entered the gallery. Hey, look, Rayla called out, having rushed ahead to find her favourite exhibits. Here's the exhibition on the 2020s trade war. It was funny, Trayvon thought, how topics so dry fascinated her so much. She delighted in the blundering actions of their distant ancestors, loving to mock and pity them all at once. Can you believe they used to all have different governments? So weird, she called out, predictably as ever. It was true, though. For anyone living now, it was impossible to imagine a time before the United World Order. The threat of not working together was simply too great, as every citizen knew well enough, and although tribalism was hardly a thing of the past entirely, it still amused them to see how much more severe it had been back in the day. All this stuff about nations and borders and separate governments? How could anyone ever hope to get anything done like that? Rayla asked him, giggling, before rushing off to the next information board. Trayvon followed slowly behind looking as he went at the figurines of historical politicians and the posters and e-boards displaying the attitudes of a long-dead era. Hey, this is new, Rayla noted. She would know, after all, Trayvon thought. In the decarbonizing the economy section, they've got a real excavated piece from a landfill. Can you believe it? They looked over it together, shocked and delighted by what they saw. Can you believe it, Trey? I barely can. People in the 21st century were so backwards. To think that they could still live like this, throwing everything away and thinking it would be alright, I can't even imagine. It must have been gross. Things change. They were living the way people did at that time, was all Trayvon could think to say. Yeah, I guess, Rayla replied thoughtfully. But the attitudes and the lifestyle... It's so weird and crazy. They really believed that buying the right kind of toothbrush could save the world at the same time as they were wasting everything they owned. Trayvon was silent, unsure what to say. I guess they were misled. They still had all that brainwashing and corrupt money from big corporations back then. It's easy for us to judge them. We know that can't work now, but people then didn't have it figured out for a long time. Rayla grinned widely and blurted out, Yeah, they must have been pretty stupid, before dashing off to the next information stand. Trayvon sighed. He always ended up being the one defending these ancient people for some reason, and she always deliberately misinterpreted him just to wind him up. He knew she knew better. They completed their historical and cultural relativism classes together in school. 
Trudging along, he followed diligently as she skipped merrily between the stands, eagerly drinking it in, making fodder for her wisecracks and mocking sneers over the long-gone people who had done so much to shape the world that it was now being rebuilt. Would all visitors please make their way to the exits? The museum is now closing. Fairy pods are waiting to escort you to your destinations. A voice rang out over the tannoy. Jeez, Rayla drawled, a note of sadness in her voice. I didn't realize it was that time already. Still, you covered all of this gallery, and that's your favorite, right? Trayvon tried to reassure her. The two of them headed back towards the stairs, ready to cross the vast expanse of water to their homes. Hey, said Rayla as they were leaving. Do you think people will think of us like this in the future? Just idiotic backwards barbarians who couldn't get anything right? Trayvon paused, considering how best to respond. Maybe it's just you who thinks like that, he eventually replied jokingly. I'm sure there were good people trying to change things back then. The exhibit even took the exhibits even talk about some of them. You just seem to ignore those parts. Yeah, but you didn't answer my question, Trey, Rayla whined, annoyed to be mocked even gently. I don't know. Maybe everyone looks back at their ancestors and wonders how they could live like they did. Perhaps in the 23rd century, people will be treating us just the same. Yeah, perhaps, Rayla wondered softly. They walked in silence for a brief moment, until she piped up once again. Hey, race you to the fairy pod. Last one, there's a climate change denier. Thank you for listening to Under 1000. I'm your host, Thomas Flower. To follow the show online, look for Under 1000 Pod on Twitter or Facebook. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash under1000pod, where you can sign up to read each month's stories in advance, as well as to have a thank you be read during these credits. The theme music is an instrumental version of In Between Days by Nick Tate and the Sharks. To hear the full song and more from the same EP, go to Nick Tate, N-I-C-T-A-T-E, and the Sharks.bandcamp.com or search for them on your favourite streaming platform. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you'll join me again next time for some more super short fiction.